Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, finding antiderivatives involving hyperbolic functions. So again, um, these are just the definitions of the hyperbolic functions. I talked about derivatives of hyperbolic functions in a different video. So again, for every derivative formula, there's a corresponding antiderivative formula. And these are basically kind of the uh, six antiderivative formulas that go with the with the uh, hyperbolic functions. So that's what I'm going to use in this video. So, all right, so let's do a few examples here. Suppose simply we just want to integrate um, hyperbolic sine times hyperbolic cosine squared of x with respect to x. So in this case again, uh, the notation I like to use, um, when it's squared, I like to pull the, the square outside. <clears throat> so all we're going to do in this problem is we're simply going to do a u substitution. So I think in this case we can let u equal hyperbolic cosine. The derivative of that is simply hyperbolic sine. So when we integrate this, um, well, we'll simply be integrating, okay, so hyperbolic cosine, I'm replacing that with u, so I'm going to get u squared. The du is equivalent to hyperbolic sine dx, so all we're really integrating is u squared du. Well, that'll give us u cubed over 3 plus c, or 1 third u cubed plus c. But again, we just plug our u back in, and hey, there's our antiderivative. Okay, so just good old u substitution it looks like here. Um, let's do a couple others. Suppose we have hyperbolic sine of square root of x over square root of x dx. Okay, again, when I have these, um, I like to rewrite my square roots as exponents. So x to the 1 half, I've got x to the 1 half. I think this is just going to be another u substitution problem. So if we let u equal x to the 1 half, the derivative of that will be 1 half x to the negative 1 half, or equivalently, we can rewrite that as 1 over 2 square root of x dx. Well, okay, so when I go to rewrite this, okay, I've got hyperbolic sine, the x to the 1 half, that's what I'm calling u, and then I would still have a 1 over x to the 1 half, or 1 over square root of x. So it says 1 over 2 square root of x dx is the same thing as du. So what I can do is, if I simply multiply both sides of this by 2, I'll get 2 on the left. That'll cancel it out on the right. Um, so it looks like we're simply going to be left with hyperbolic sine of u times 2 du. Well, we can just pull this 2 out front. Okay, anything divided by 1 is obviously 1. Or excuse me, is obviously itself. So really we're just integrating hyperbolic sine u du. Well, if we integrate hyperbolic sine, again, we saw that's hyperbolic cosine of u plus c. And now we just have to plug back in our value for u. So again, u is just x to the 1 half, or square root of x. And that will be our antiderivative. All right, let me do one more here. So again, you know, nothing, nothing too bad. It's just knowing your derivatives. Um, it's basically just knowing your formulas and being able to do u-substitution. Um, in most of the textbooks that I've seen when they present calculus, um, calculus textbooks, it seems like they usually talk about hyperbolic functions before they start doing all the other um, techniques of integration. So at least in the book that I'm using, which is James Stewart's uh, calculus book, Typically, they haven't done integration by parts, um, 
partial fractions, all these other weird, you know, well, I shouldn't say weird, all these other um, integration techniques. So typically, to do these problems, it's either going to be doing U substitution, or I think as this problem will illustrate, um, sometimes you also have to use your good old trig identities. Okay, so here we want to integrate hyperbolic cosine over hyperbolic cosine squared x minus 1. Okay, well, there's a trig identity. There's a trig identity that says um, hyperbolic cosine squared x minus hyperbolic sine squared x equals 1. This is kind of the fundamental identity. Um, well, if you subtract 1 and add hyperbolic sine, we'll get that hyperbolic cosine squared minus 1 is hyperbolic sine squared. So that's what I'm going to plug in the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to plug that in. Okay, and now a couple different ways you could do this one. Um, you actually could do a U substitution, which is not originally how I thought about it. You could do a U substitution letting U equal hyperbolic sine. But I think what I'm going to do is what I originally thought to do. We'll see if it works. I'm going to break this up as hyperbolic cosine over hyperbolic sine times 1 over hyper hyperbolic sine. So again, um, that'll give me hyperbolic sine squared in the bottom. But um, hyperbolic cosine over sine we know that that's just going to give us um, hyperbolic cotangent. 1 over hyperbolic sine, that's hyperbolic cosecant. And if we integrate this, this was one of the formulas um, I almost had. <clears throat> it turns out when you integrate this, you're going to pick up a negative. Um, we'll get negative hyperbolic cosecant of x plus c. And that'll be our solution. So again, remember our original formula, we had a negative in here. Um, and then we got positive hyperbolic cosecant. But since the signs are opposite, here we're integrating a positive. We'll pick up that negative to make everything, um, all the signs work out correctly. All right, um, I hope these videos help and make some sense. If you need to see some more complicated integrals or um, derivatives or anything else, feel free to post comments and questions, and I will try to help you out out there. So, all right, um, I hope my little hyperbolic tutorial helps you a little bit, um, and good luck out there.